Dimitri Bevo pulls off the upset and beats Canelo Alvarez. Let's talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, fight fans, it was an upset. It was light heavyweight champion Dimitri Bevo with the upset over Saul Canelo Alvarez. Let me start off by saying I got this fight wrong. I picked Canelo. I thought that Canelo would win by decision. That 115, 113 score, 116, 112 is what I thought. I thought that Canelo would be too much class. I even thought that he might hurt Bivol to the body at some point in the fight, and I thought that he would win a unanimous decision, but that's not how it played out. Let me start with the pros and the cons. Let me start with Alvarez. The pros would be, I, pr I very much respect the fact that the man was chasing greatness. I respect the fact that he wanted to be great. I respect the fact that he went up to light heavyweight and he did not come with a catch weight. He just went up to fight one of the top three guys in the division. I like the fact that he stuck to his guns of throwing his quick left hook. He was throwing shots to the arm. He was throwing that uppercut. But let me get to the cons. Canelo was unactive. Now, it's been a while since I've had, when, when I used to do my pros and the cons, I have cons about Alvarez, but he was not active enough, and I felt that he did not have a plan B and a plan C. I don't know if he thought that little of Bivol, that he thought that he would just outclass him the way he did Smith and some of the other guys that he's fought in the past, but he didn't have another game plan, and I think that's what came back to haunt him. As for Dimitri Bivol, the pros would be, I like the fact that he kept his guard up high. I like the fact that he used his jab. He had the longer arms. Uh, I like the fact that he came into the ring bigger. They both weighed in at like 174 and some change, but Bivo looked like he had to be 190 in the ring. I mean, he was, now I know that when, uh, when Alvarez fought, Kovalev, Kovalev definitely looked bigger than him, but Bivol also looked bigger. But the thing was that another pro is that Bivol fought like he was the bigger man. And when he would throw the jab or Canelo were back too close to the ropes, he was throwing three to five punch combinations upstairs and downstairs. I like the fact that he had good movement. Every time Canelo would come in, he knew he was going to try to throw one of those left hooks. Bivol would step back. That's the reason why I think he caught a lot of shots on his left bicep is that he was stepping back. He wasn't. He was throwing Canelo's rhythm off. Let's talk about the fight. The fight was OK. The fight wasn't overly entertaining. The truth is, is that the fight, I thought the fight would have been more entertaining if Canelo would have been more active. And I think that Dimitri Bivol took advantage of that. Canelo was pretty much resorting to pot shotting. He would throw a punch. He would back off. Sometimes he would throw that quick combination where he would go with a hook and maybe come with the uppercut or go with a hook and go to the body. But to be honest, everybody, I actually counted six to eight seconds in some of those rounds where Canelo didn't throw a punch. Like he would throw a punch and I would count in my head one, one thousand, two, one thousand, all the way to six, seven, eight seconds before he would throw another punch. And I think that what he wanted was he wanted Bivol to fall into his trap of walking in on him. But Bivol was very disciplined. He said he learned something from the Callum Smith fight. And I think that he was not going to get suckered into a, 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 you know, a quick, a quick shot, a quick, uh, quick punch war with Alvarez, because that would have been his best chance and maybe hurt Bivol. I think that Canelo's best round was it the I want to say it was maybe the, the, the fifth round. But he didn't fight the rest of the, you know, the, he didn't fight the rest of the rounds like that. I felt that he gave that fight away. We get to the end of the fight, and of course, Dimitri Bivol wins by unanimous decision. So let's talk about what happens from here. Saul Alvarez said that he has a rematch clause and he wants that rematch, and Bivol said that he would take it as well. So let's talk about what happens from here. I have a feeling that. Alvarez can still go on with the Golovkin fight. Bivol said at the end of the fight in the post-fight interview, I'm sorry, to, he said to Eddie Hearn, I'm sorry that uh, I ruined your plans for the third Golovkin fight. But Canelo is still the A-side in boxing. I don't think that this one loss with him going up in weight to be great is going to knock him off the perch. Now, tomorrow, today or tomorrow, someone may move Terrence Crawford up to the number one spot, and that's fine. You know, that you know that that's absolutely okay, you know, if, you know, they want to knock Canelo down until he wins the fight. But I have a feeling that Canelo is still going to go through with the Golovkin fight. I think he can use that fight as a I'm not being disrespectful when I say this, but a tune up fight 
because I still think that he beats Golovkin easy at this stage of Golovkin's career. Yes, Golovkin isn't completely washed, but he's not the Golovkin of 2013. Let's just be fair. So I still think that being the A side, he can still say, well, I'm going to still fight Golovkin in September. And then when he mentioned that he wanted to fight someone in December, do the rematch with Bivol, because if Canelo money is on the line, I'm pretty sure that Bivol is not going to fight an interim fight. He's not going to mess up that payday. So I think that Dimitri Bivol will stay inactive until December. Canelo can fight Golovkin in September. I meant to say December for Bivol. And then they can do their rematch in December. Now, Dimitri Bivol did mention that he would definitely do the rematch, but this time he would like to get treated like the champion. And I think that's only fair. I think it's only fair that if they do the rematch, that Bivol steps on the scale second and he walks in the ring second and he is introduced last. Treat the man like a champion. He, he won the fight fair and square. When you do it again, treat him like the champion. As for... Saul Alvarez, I don't really think this means anything other than he lost the fight. I don't think it means that he's overrated, he's overhyped. He still is a great fighter, and I believe that he's still going to go down as one of the greatest. Remember, the greatest fighter that ever lived, Sugar Ray Robinson. And, and for those of you who never watched him fight but only go on box rec and say, well, the man had 19 losses, you need to go watch Sugar Ray Robinson fight. He had losses, and he's still considered the greatest fighter to ever live, pound for pound. I think that Canelo is still on that trajectory i still think that he is a great fighter and hey, hey he, he lost a fight he lost a fight against a bigger man who actually treated him like the smaller man not a big deal but i hope that if they do rematch when they do rematch that canelo watches the film and he learns something and i hope he learns that all he has to do is be more active that's really all it was get in stay in close take a page out of Usyk's book when he beat anthony joshua get in close throw combinations you know use your upper body movement throw three four five shots get in get out do that if he does that canelo's gonna ruin the rematch and then we can go on from here and continue to watch him be great all right fight fans what did you think about the fight like me did you pick saul alvarez and if you picked dimitri bivo let me know and let me know why you did and what do you want to see from here do you like my idea of alvarez going ahead and fighting golovkin and getting that out the way in september and then maybe picking up uh bivo in December or do you want to see something else and what about Dimitri Bivo do you want to see him wait around for that Alvarez fight or do you want to maybe see him do something do something different anyway if you haven't already like comment and subscribe let me know what you thought about the fight and turn on the, and turn on the notification bell so we can keep talking boxing otherwise fight fans that's all I got I'll let y'all later